closures. A closure is the combination of a function and the environment within which that function was declared. The environment consists of any local variables that were in scope at the time that the closure was created. In JavaScript, all functions form closures. In other languages without closures, the local variables within a function only exist for the duration of that function's execution. Let's look at an example. So we have this function, make func, and we have the var name equals js nuggets, and then we have another function within the function, display name, where we're going to console.log the name, and this function make func is going to return the display name, the other function. So down here, we're going to create um, the my func equals make func, which is we're making a variable that's this function, and then we're going to run my func. Now it's going to return display name. Now if we run that, it's going to display JS nuggets. So it's returning this function. Inside that function, there is no name, but because of closures, this function that's been re that's being returned and run here has access to the environment with that it was created in which means it has access to this js nuggets the name variable even though this the name isn't even in here so that's basically what a closure is so the function has access to any variable that's within the scope or the environment that it was created in now let's look at some more some more practical examples a closure lets you associate some data, which is the environment, with a function that operates on that data. One way to use a closure is to emulate private methods. Private methods can only be called by other methods in the same class, but JavaScript does not have a native way of doing this. It is possible to emulate private methods with closures. Okay, let's look at this. We have a var counter, and this is assigned to an anonymous function. And here's the anonymous function right here. And as soon as the anonymous function is assigned, it's executed as soon as it's been defined. These two parentheses at the end is go are going to execute that function and put the execution of that function into the variable counter. And the, so it's going to return, when it executes the function, it's going to return this into the variable counter. So this is actually first going to create a shared environment and then it's going to um, send out some things into the variable counter. So the share environment involves the private var private counter zero and the function change by value, which is private counter, and then it's going to add the, the value and then assign the, the added value to private counter. So it's going to increase private counter by the value. So then we're going to return these functions. And um, because these functions have been returned into the counter, you are only going to be able to access these functions from outside of the counter. So these are going to be private, and these are going to be the, the, the public methods. So we're returning the increment function with change by one. It calls change by one. And see, this increment method that's being created can access the change by method because it's in the environment that it was created in. This decrement can access the change by because it's in the environment that was created in. And this value can return the private counter variable because that's within the, the environment it was created in. So neither of the private items can be accessed directly from outside of the anonymous function, but they can just be accessed by the three public functions that are returned from the anonymous wrapper. These are the public functions. Thanks to JavaScript's lexical scoping, they each have access to the private counter variable and the change by function. So let's see this in action. We're going to console.log counter.value, counter.value, and then we're going to increment it. We're going to increment it again. Then we're going to counter.log, console.log it again. Then we're going to decrement it and then console.log. So let me run this and see the first time the counter is one, zero. After two increments, it's two, and then we decrement and it's one. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this gave you a good introduction to closures. My name is Bo Carnes, and if you check the description, you can look for some links that where you can get some more information about closures, including a link where I got a lot of the information for this video. Please subscribe, and remember, use your code for good.